Hey guys, I'm changing the format of this channel because I don't have enough subscribers. Instead of me talking about classic Mercedes topics, I'm just going to start vlogging my life and showing everybody how cool I am. I'm going to show, do, show myself doing things like brushing my teeth or, um, I don't know, cooking for a one-year-old in the morning, cutting my grass. I mean, I'm sure I could get like two to three million subscribers if I just showed myself doing mundane tasks just like every other normie. So for those of you who are shadow watchers and like to watch without subscribing, um, I'm going to give everybody what they want so that we have 5% Mercedes content so it just looks like a cool lifestyle accessory and 95% me content so that I can show off what a great and fabulous and exciting life I have. Just kidding. Uh, today we're going to talk about the engineered diesel shortage. So I've been following the situation and trying to figure out what's going on here. And so uh, it's becoming pretty clear that there is an engineered shortage of diesel fuel. Now, why is this? Well, we could blame Putin or we can blame Biden, which I don't, I don't know if that's really going to solve the problem. I don't think just getting angry and blaming you know, the president or some other country's president is really getting the root of the problem. Actually, our fuel industry has been hijacked by hedge funds. And so I've come to this conclusion because I saw a video of the CEO of Flying J testifying in front of Congress saying that he, he was told that the uh, railroads and um, the petroleum supply companies are told to reduce their diesel shipments by 25%. It's a big problem because what that does, it may not introduce actual scarcity, but it creates perceived scarcity. And this is because some of the same hedge funds that are invested in manufacturing diesel and transporting fuel across the country. And by the way, transport is a huge industry. Warren Buffett, that asshole is invest. And I've never liked Warren Buffett, by the way, I wish he would just die and go away. Um, I think that, uh, that the fact that he's invested so heavily in Union Pacific is telling of the fact that, that, that he wants to control transportation of critical goods in the United States. Unfortunately, Union Pacific uh, is charging more and more money to transport the very fuel that their engines run off of because also supply chains have been cut at the top because of the hedge funds that have an interest in in petroleum manufacturing now guess what else these hedge funds are invested in electric cars battery technologies all this crap we keep hearing about a unicorn electric car infrastructure now again i'm fine with people buying electric cars and using them that's great especially if you live in a congested area like manhattan or la or um miami you know, it's a great idea to have an electric car. It's just like sort of having a golf cart when you're in a fancy schmancy subdivision and you need a clean, quick, easy form of transportation to go do all of your basic things. If you have a 30 mile or less commute every day, great, whatever. I'm good with that. But what I don't like is the people that are responsible for electric car production trying to make people think that there's a petroleum shortage when there's actually no petroleum shortage. There's just this push to force people to pay more for gas so they'll think maybe I should get an electric car. And um, that's called manipulating consumers. And so that's really not good. So that's why at the end of the day, I am really not the biggest corporatist because I see what these hedge funds try to do to force people to change their minds. Unfortunately, because of this squeeze, they've created massive inflation, which has made certain goods like electric cars more unaffordable. I would say right now, the leading driver of inflation in this country are fuel prices because transporting a good is the number one thing that determines its on-shelf cost to a consumer. What it costs to make happen. That's why when I would go do on-site services for customers, my, my number one line item besides a bunch of individual parts and a bunch of labor expenses 
happen to be my travel cost. You know, and if you're transporting cold goods, the travel cost is doubled because you have to run the refrigerator on the unit. Normal people who buy normal cars, you know, and I'm not talking about the kind of cars we necessarily service all the time, although we do have a few customers that have, you know, that have um, some really interesting daily drivers. And we have serviced for years, you know, a bunch of 123 and 126 diesels that are driven daily. Uh, but I'm talking about the normal person who has a $200 a month car payment on a Honda or a Hyundai or a Kia or something because that's what they can afford. That person is even less of a is in even is in even less of a position to buy an electric car, because you can't just buy go out and buy an electric car when you're living paycheck to paycheck. You know you can't go out and buy any new car. It doesn't work like that. And um, I don't know. Shame on you, hedge funds, and uh, shame on you for creating perceived scarcity when we really don't have any problems and doing things like making food harder to purchase or harder for people to go travel and see their families because of rising travel costs and airplanes. I mean, this is just, you know, insane and ridiculous, you know? And um, shame on you, US government, for uh, creating circumstances that fostered these sorts of ideas. I see this over and over again. The government of the United States is more willing to help people outside of the country than its own citizens. And it's not even a partisan problem, it's a problem that has been ongoing through every single administration where we're, we're deciding whether we should send $50 billion to Ukraine before we even figure out a way to get our fuel costs under control in this country. I mean, that's just absurd. I'm not saying don't help Ukraine. I'm just saying take care of us first. You know, we're the ones that pay taxes, not the citizens of Ukraine. So I'm just saying, you know, and if you want to help a Ukrainian cause, don't make the government do it. Make the decision for yourself to donate your own money to that sort of thing. You know, I personally am not the most pro-gun person, but you know, if somebody said, oh, you can donate a box of bullets so that a Ukrainian family can defend themselves against Russians, I'd be all for that. What I'm not for is $50 billion going to where? Tell me, explain, you know, I don't know. But um, anyway, I know this is like a deviation from our normal topic, but Diesel fuel prices need to get under control, even if some of us need to show up at the, you know, at the hedge fund offices and protest. And um, it is possible to put a hedge fund out of business. I don't know if you saw, but Melvin Capital that shorted GameStop closed their doors last week. You know, and any time a hedge fund like that goes under, especially one that is into screwing consumers or smaller businesses, guess what? We should throw a party. Okay, please like, share, and subscribe. Tap the bell for notifications and don't give in. You don't need, if you have an older car, you're still ahead of the game. You don't need an electric car that's just going to cost you a fortune and payments and insurance. So we'll see you all in the next video and um, enjoy driving your Mercedes Benz, even if you have to pay dearly for it at the moment.